In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace your fuel pump on your Toyota Camry. This is actually located under the back seat inside the fuel pump assembly or the fuel sending unit. Let's get started. To begin this process, we need to relieve fuel pressure from the system. To do that, in your engine compartment towards the driver's side, you'll see this cover which says relay and fuses. You're going to pop this up by pressing on this tab here. There's a similar looking tab on the back side. And this houses all of your fuses, including the one for the fuel pump or the electronic fuel injection system, which is, if you look on this legend here, it's the one all the way to the right bottom. It's a 30 amp fuse. Looking in the fuse box, you'll see this green one right here. That's the 30 amp fuse we're after. Use your fuse puller. If you don't have this in, your, uh, in the cap of your fuse box, you can use some needle nose pliers. Pull up on that fuse, remove it. Set it aside safely. I'm gonna leave this cap here with the fuse and the fuse puller in it. And now we're gonna go crank the engine. What this is going to do is it's going to try to start, but there's no fuel pressure being delivered. So it's just gonna use up the rest that's in the lines. Just a few cranks should be enough. There you go. The next step is to remove this back seat or the bottom of it at least so we can access the top of the fuel pump. To remove this on each side, you'll have a little hook right about here and here that snaps it down. So just grab it and pull up firmly and it should pop out. There we go. Once you do that, you should be able to continue lifting it and pulling it out. Now this is the cover where we'll access everything, the electrical connector as well as all the lines. It is stuck down with some butyl tape, so just take something that you have that'll pry it. If you're using a metal piece like I am, which sometimes you kind of have to because it's really stuck on here, be careful not to scrape anything, scratch the paint off because it will rust if you do that. Just gentle, constant pressure. We'll get this off of here. There we go. This butyl tape is extremely sticky, so be careful not to get it on your clothing or on the carpet because it will be pretty much impossible to get back off. Once you get to this point, you can push this grommet through so you can get a little bit more slack out of this wiring harness. There we go. And we can flip this over. Once again, make sure you don't get this stuff on the carpet. And now we can unplug the electrical connector and get this wire completely out of here. A lot of times these are gummed up with a lot of sand and debris, so work it back and forth if you need to. Get a uh, vacuum and vacuum all this up. Don't try to press it really hard with some pliers or pry on it with a screwdriver because if you break this connector, you can't properly reattach your fuel pump anymore and that would be a problem. I can see that it wants to move, but it's gummed up with a lot of sand. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to uh, grab a vacuum and try to vacuum all this up and maybe spray a little bit of rust penetrant right in the connector area here to loosen it up. Soak that down a little and then I'll work it back and forth. Hopefully this helps break it free. Since I have the rust penetrant out, I'm just gonna soak down these connectors as well. A lot of times these get stuck. And we'll have to take all these off anyway. It has come down to using pliers. Be very gentle if you have to do this. Gently press on this, wiggle it. There we go. It was clearly pretty stuck in here, so I'm gonna tap it, tap it down like this. Hopefully that'll remove some of the debris in there. Um, I might blow some compressed air, but hopefully yours comes off a lot easier. Now, if you need to use a vacuum to do further cleaning before you disconnect any lines, this is gonna be the last time you can do that because once you crack any three of these lines open, fuel fumes come out and electric motors and fuel fumes don't really mix together well. If you still need to remove debris after you've removed the lines, you can use compressed air, of course, but just not a vacuum. 
to disconnect the red connector for the EVAP line. I'm going to start at the bottom with a pocket screwdriver and press that little hook down with another tool. I'm going to pry outward like this and come in at the top with the pocket screwdriver and press this one or pry this one up as you push this out. It's going to click out of place like that. That's how you know it's disconnected. And now if you just wiggle this slowly, you should be able to pull this line off. Once again, this is for evaporative emissions. This is not fuel, but there are fuel fumes going through it. Next, we have to remove the fuel lines here, and uh, it doesn't matter which one you do first. These yellow clips for the fuel lines, they slide straight back like that. You have to basically do a similar, similar style uh, setup here as to what we had before for the red one. A tool to pry it out and one to unlock it as you pry out. There we go, whoops, sometimes they do pop back, so be careful, but also be careful when you pry not to damage the fitting or the line here. There we go. Remove this, uh, you can either remove it all, all the way, or uh, sometimes the hose will pop off like this. It looks like I have to remove mine all the way. If you do, remember which direction it goes in, not that it'll lock in in any other way, you can't put it upside down, but obviously keep these safe. And now you should be able to slowly pull up on this, set that aside. If you wanted to wrap a rag around it so debris from here doesn't get on the line, that's also a good idea. So I'm gonna use this to hold pressure on it. And do one side and the other side. There we go. Spraying rust penetrant definitely helped on those. Often they are stuck. Bring this through. They're both the same, both of these, so you don't have to worry about mixing them up. And give it a couple twists. Remove this line. Perfect. Now there are a bunch of eight millimeter bolts surrounding this lock ring. We have to remove them all. Usually the threads aren't too rusty, even though the heads do look rusty. So grab your eight millimeter socket, maybe a little hammer to tap the socket down. You definitely want proper engagement on these bolts so that you don't strip them out if they're still good and remove them all. I do not recommend using electric power tools at this point. So if you have air, use air. If not, just do them by hand. As soon as you take this last one out, the fuel pump assembly is spring loaded, so keep that in mind. It will pop up a little bit. And that would be, that was our last one. So at this point, I have to actually push this pump down so I can have space here to get the lock ring off. Pay attention to your fuel lines. You don't want to break them. They are plastic. They do bend a little bit, but you obviously don't want to break them. So get this off and set it aside. And now we have our fuel pump here at this point. The less fuel you have in your fuel tank, the cleaner this job is gonna end up. At this point, I recommend having a container that is rated for fuel so you can lift this pump out and put it in that so that you don't spill all over your back seat. And now, as you lift this up, make sure this gasket comes with the pump. We're gonna replace it. And there is one more hose for us to take off and that's this one right here. This is for your EVAP. And you're gonna to wanna to put a pocket screwdriver right underneath it. This connector is probably gonna be a little bit stiff because it's been soaked in fuel for a long time. And this will pry backwards like that. There we go. That pops out like that. Once that happens, you can remove this hose or this line, leave that down in the tank because you need the space here to pull up the rest of this pump, which is kind of offset like this. I have my collection bucket here. Let as much of this fuel drain as you can, and then once you get to the end, remember you have a float level sensor here. That also needs to clear. And I'm gonna quickly put this over in my bucket. And there's your fuel pump. Now I'm gonna clean off this area. It looks really good already, it's not rusty, but uh, I will take a rag and just wipe any debris that's there so that the new seal, new rubber O-ring can seal up nicely. 
if you had a lot of rot build up here, it would be time for a new fuel tank. So keep that in mind. You want this to seal properly. And uh, obviously try to get as little debris as possible down in the fuel tank. Now to remove the actual pump from the sending unit, I'm gonna unplug it first. If you look right by that connector at the top, there's gonna be a little tab. I'm going to press on this, pry that down as I pull the connector out, just like this. So basically use my pocket screwdriver to press down on that tab, unlock it, and pull it out. And now, right here, there's gonna be a tab that you can pry out and up. Same over here, out and up. And this will lift up the entire pump assembly out of this bucket. There it is. Now with a pocket screwdriver, I'm gonna pry these caps or the, these tabs off, to pry that whole bottom section off, including this right here. Okay, that pops out. There's that, set that aside. Now at the, now at the bottom of this assembly, you'll see this white clip that holds the hose that leads to the bottom of the fuel pump. Pry that off and slide this whole retainer for the hose off. Now with that out, get these cables out of here and take this out. There it is. On the fuel pump at the top, make sure you put this uh, plastic ring on, kind of like a spacer there, and then this can fall off. So when you put the pump in, make sure it stays on there the whole time. It actually will go right in there. There's gonna be an O-ring. That's where it all seals up. So try not to tip the pump over. Try to get this housing to slide over like that. And then turn this all into position so that the bottom can latch in on all these clips. And then you wanna press them nice and tight, just like that. That all snaps together. And now we can put this down in here. As you drop it down, remember these clips need to slide into their corresponding locks, just like that. That's locked in, perfect. Lastly, the electrical connector, which was the blue and black wire. So slide down here and make sure that clicks on. Make sure any other wires and hoses are properly attached. Let's put this back in the vehicle. Now, put your gasket on. This is a brand new gasket. It doesn't matter which direction you put it in, it's flat on both sides. Slide it over the bottom. It won't fit over the top unless you stretch it, which I don't recommend doing. Careful of all of these lines that are in the way here and the wires, just like this. And once you get it up towards the top, we can start putting this pump in, starting with the float. That has to slide in first. Make sure all of your fuel lines are out of the way here. Once you get the bucket in, you're gonna to wanna to grab this EVAP line, fish it out, because we have to reconnect it at the top of the fuel pump assembly. And once you line it up, press it on all the way. Now, sometimes these connectors will clip back in by themselves. This one has to be pushed back in. And if you pull back down on it, it should move just a tiny bit, but will not come off. That's what you're looking for there. Once that is in, make sure all these wires are pushed down. You don't want to pinch them there. And the gasket is obviously seated properly all around the top. It should seat itself around the top of the fuel pump. And it is also important that you have this clocked right. Now, if it's not exactly the way it came out, that's okay as long as it's in the same general direction, which was right about here. Now, we can take this locking ring, which should slide on just like this. And these fuel lines are gonna be kind of in your way, but just push them aside. You're gonna have to hold the fuel pump this whole time because it wants to spring back upwards. So, do this. And now, hopefully you have your hardware accessible so you can at least put in one bolt or two bolts so that it can hold this ring on. Okay, there's one. That started, I'm gonna put another one in across the, on the other side here so I can kind of have even pressure on this fuel pump. 
There we go, that one started. I'm still holding it. I'm gonna put one over here, forming sort of a triangle. And after this, I can, I can let go with confidence that this is not gonna pop back up or go crooked at an angle. There we go. Now let's start the rest of the bolts in and snug them up. At this point, I have all of them started by hand. You do not want to cross thread any of these, so don't just smash them down with the socket. And I'm going to snug them up in a cross pattern. You'll see that the fuel pump and the ring will start squishing down as I snug these because the gasket is seating and sealing. Now, these are tiny, so keep in mind, you do not want to break them by tightening them too much. Just give them a little snug. Once they bottom out and basically get snug, at most an eighth of a turn after that. Otherwise they will break and that's not going to be a fun time. Okay, so this is all of them snugged. I'm going to go around one more time. As you can see, this one loosened up. Now let's reconnect all the fuel lines. I'm going to start with this one here, this one here, and this EVAP line. Once it bottoms out like that, hold it and press this uh, clip back in. Use a little pocket screwdriver, lift those up, make sure it doesn't come out. Let's put in the yellow retainers for the other fuel lines. Slide it in. This one came from that direction. And you want to make sure that it locks in completely. This part needs to be flush and the ends here need to be hooked in. This line should not be able to pop out. Do the same to this one. Now connect the electrical connector. Make sure that clicks. Flip this cover over, line it up. I mean, there's really only that only one way that it can go on and because there's no hardware attaching this it's just BL tape you're going to want to put pretty much your whole body weight on it to squish that tape down this is going to seal it up it's important that it's sealed and of course once you put the back seat and maybe have some passengers or cargo back here it'll automatically squish down but to start you want to have a nice tight seal so make sure it's even all the way around and there you have it Let's put the back seat on. When you put the back seat in, make sure you get the seatbelt latches through their corresponding cutouts here. And then slide the seat in. Sometimes you'll need to kind of forcefully push it down into place. Make sure the seat belts themselves are not getting pinched and caught. And once you get it close, it should pop down in position. And this is not the final step. Oh, that just clicked in. The final step is to actually press this down to clip it. There we go. And there you have it. Let's start up the engine, make sure it runs. Put this fuse back, just like that. Take your fuse box cover, line it up, snap it down. Now that the job is done, before we start the vehicle, I like to prime the fuel system, which means putting the key in the ignition, turning it two clicks of so the on position. This is going to let the fuel pump run. Hold it here for a few seconds, shut it off, do this again. I'm going to do this three times and then I'll start it. This usually gets all the air out of the system. You can hear the fuel pump run if you're in a quiet environment. Starts right up. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.